Sean Kwan Kim yes. and mm-hmm. Min Kim. Yeah. And it's so nice to have you, and you're both from South Korea, but you've made Jacksonville your home mm-hmm. for many years, and I'd like to talk to you about okay. that aspect of your life. Mm-hmm. So uh, welcome, and tell me about your country of origin, your life there, and when you decided to come here. But we're going to get into detail, too, but mm-hmm. that's a quick overview. Just go right ahead. Okay. Um, I'm born in Seoul, and... Uh, I lived in Seoul 27 years, and then when we get 27, we married in Korea, and then we moved to the United States. So we live in Jacksonville, it's about 38 years now. So what year did you come to Jacksonville? 1980. 1980. Mm -hmm. Let's go way back and let's talk about, both of you talk about your life as children and growing up in South Korea Mm -hmm. and whether you were both in Seoul, Mm -hmm. how you met, how you decided to come to the United States, and how you decided to come to Jacksonville. Maybe she's a better answer. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, We were were met in uh, 1973. 73. He was 20 and I was 19 years old. And we were dating about two, three years. And I come to United States first, 1977. And my sister living in Kansas. So uh, I moved here first. And then I go back 1980 and got married with him. And we moved after Mary, we moved to Jacksonville. I think in 1981, January, we started here mm-hmm. to uh, marry. 1980, life. December, January 8, 1981. So. How did you select Jacksonville? Actually, I had a job in Jacksonville. That's where I moved. I, had, uh, I work in a trading company, international trading company in Korea. And one of the companies in Jacksonville hired me to a trading company. That's where I come down to Jacksonville. And let's talk about your life growing up in Korea, both of you. Uh, what life was like, and what made you want to come here other than the job offer? Mm-hmm. Why, why did you want to come, and what has uh, encouraged you, or why, why have you made this your home, I would say permanently, and you mm-hmm. can uh, tell me if you haven't or don't. Mm-hmm. Well, it to me, I was grow up in Seoul, Korea, and which is a big, big city. And uh, I get a job after high school. And uh, my sister was here, so in I Kansas. decided. Yeah, my sister was here, so I had a dream in coming to United States. Maybe that time I was looking for something more economic thing. But when I living, uh, when I living in here, America, because when I was coming here, I, I was twenty three years old, and I started to go to school and get a job and uh, before Mary, and uh, American life. Was this is, college you were going to at this point? I went to the beauty US? school. In beauty, beauty school, college, beauty yeah. college in I Kansas. I went to beauty college, yeah. Okay. So I got a job in the hairdresser, and I'm working. It's a lot different than Korea. It's, uh, well, Korea have a very, um, what are you good? Uh, hmm. Competition is very, uh, very hard to get a job, but comparing that, America is very easy to get a job. Wherever you go, you got a job. <laughs> I mean, that's the, and then I feel like uh, I'm running around the big playground just by myself. It's feeling that way. In Korea, so many people uh, in Seoul, Korea, so many competition. We have a, my mom has me, put me up very, study hard for when I was studying elementary yeah. school. And I was like, uh, too much pressure from the, my uh, school year. So I decided not to go in college myself because it's, it's, I wasn't really prepared for college. But when I come to America, I actually more study hard than in Korea because uh, my language, I don't understand any word what the, you know, the school teaching. So I have to be overnight study and study for the testing. And my sister told me, if you are studying Korea like that, you should be somebody already. <laughs> but I learned, you know, in Korea, my language, 
I understand, so I didn't really work hard, but when I come to America, I have to work in every single thing hard, but my mind already changing. I choose America. This is my second life. I'm not going to live like what Korea. Korea is like my mom told me to study. We have to push in from the, my parents. But when I get here, everything is my decision. So I have to work harder, and I don't give up everything. I have to do everything possibly what I can do. That's always another different life than comparing in Korea. Yeah, most immigration come to United States is more American dream means better life. You know? So better life means better economics and then better education. But for example, is in Korea, North and South together, land wide is almost same as Florida. And then Korea is a divide by North and South. So now I believe is a Florida only twenty million dollar, twenty million population. And Korea South and North is a 70 million population. Especially half of South Korea is 50 million. So if we divided Florida, it probably 6 million. Korea is 50 million. That means a lot of competition. So uh, many Korean people, of course, other immigration to from other country too, but most Korean people, same thing. When you come to the United States, it's for a better life, better economics, life, no, better education. No. How much English did you speak when you came to the United States? Uh, it's not that much. I was an international trading company, but most of the paperwork, not actually speaking in conversation. But uh, now it's just not really good, but much better than when you come down here. The first time I come down Jacksonville, I have some, something unfair to me because I couldn't speak English very well, you know, something like that. But now it's much better, you know. Min, did you speak much English when you came here to visit your no, sister? Not really. But uh, when I, we were uh, middle school, we started teaching English in the day. But basically, we are sentence, reading, writing, but not the communication. So even we see the somebody, American people, we could not say hello to them because, but when I started, decided coming to America, I went to school for the English. And they teach me, you got to talk to them. You got to talk, you got to keep trying on them. Mm -hmm. So that time, my team mind everything. Every time I see some people, I start talking. I came from Korea, you know, I just say whatever I can say. So that's how I change my life is a whole change. Before, my life is very, just whatever I take, I take it away. But now I get more to go in action, to go to told other people, asking, talking with a different, you know, style. That's why we get learning better, I think. I want to talk about your childhood in South Korea. Mm -hmm. Uh, how did you grow up? How many brothers and sisters did you have? What was your home like? How did your home in South Korea differ from the way you live here? Mm. Those sorts of questions. Well, uh, I have uh, three brothers and one sister, and I live in Seoul, which is very center of Seoul, as uh, we call Gwanghwamun, where it is right now. Uh, blue house in there, everything in there, the center of there. But uh, I don't know. It's very normal you know, childhood. But we have, uh, I have some hard time because in 1960, have an army revolution in Korea. And he been 18 years dictatorship. And that time, my family have a hard time too because reason is uh, he didn't help the Army general helped the revolution. So, but overall, it's like have a fun, you know, our, our regular children, everything. And did you have uh, a big house or a little house? Or were you in a yes? Apartment? We had uh, our in that time when I was a child, 
is in Seoul, is the highest building, is a four storage house that time, 1960s. It's what town? It's a it's four. One, four storage, there is the highest one, most of them. Now is they got hundred storage, something big, but uh, you know Hyundai Company? Yes. Hyundai is uh, their main building was not far from my house. And that is a four storage house building. My house was four storage building. So actually my father was, is uh, like a property owner, a big property and has a lot of money over there. So it's a center of something, like in center of the soul, my father have some buildings, properties, so real estate. A very rich family. Yes. A rich, a rich family. Now, what about your family? Like, um, my family is uh, Seoul. Is uh, our uh, mom and daddy, all the family, grandfather. We grow in the uh, the same place. You were all in one one house or one apartment? Or? Oh, we had a house. A house. I have uh, three, uh, two sister and three brother, and I my, I'm the youngest one in my family. And when I go to elementary school, my sister went to college. So, you know, they are a lot older than me. Uh, we had one house, uh, like a three-bedroom house. But we were managing really good. My parents have a different, uh, they have a business, uh, another place. So they're living in the business area. All the children living in the three-bedroom house. With the grandparents? With, no, no we, not your grandparents. We have a house uh, helping. You know, the person, yeah, they are helping food and cleaning, yeah, so that's like why. Like a housemaid. Housemaid. Yeah, we were pretty, pretty wealthy, too. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so you both had some money. Now, what, what about, or your families did, how did the two of you meet uh, before you came to the United States or when you returned? Uh, well, we, how we met? How did the two of you meet? Yeah, we met in 1973 when I serviced Air Korean Air first. And then we started day to 73, and then 77, she come to United States. That means we broke, actually. And, uh, but it's not broke because of fight. She, her parents want her to come, come to the United States. So okay. 1977 to 1980, we didn't that much connection, you know. But 1980, I'm ready, I'm, my age is ready to the married, you know. So I call her, and if you come to get married, I'll marry with you. <laughs> but if you not come, then I have to find another lady. <laughs> and she agreed to come, so she come in 1980, <laughs> and then we get married April, uh, February 1980. Yeah. February something. 1980, February. Uh, February 1980. I think at the time when we married, I always think we, he's grew up in the Christian life. My family is not a, the Christian. Buddha actually. Not the Buddha, but it's a, it's a like a, uh, we are we, we were not Christian. But when I met him when I was 19, we were dating like three years. Then I come to America, and then we almost you know forget each other. And then last minute he was calling me to come to Korea to get married. So I just, uh, I was missing home. I missed a friend. So I decided to go back. If I, we didn't change it, and uh, maybe I get married with him. So I go back and we were married. But the time is, uh, we had a very difficult time to go through because our last name is the same name. So we yeah, let me tell. In, oh, okay. It's the same last name, it's but even same last name the Kim. There's about another kind of a family group as a location. For example, Jacksonville Kim family, Orlando Kim family. So her and ours is the same. Gyeongju, Gyeongju means one of the places in South Korea. Most so the popular, the popular name, they, or that Kim family starting field area is Gyeongju. We are same. But actually that is uh, hundreds of years of starting there. Actually not relationship any. But Korean rule is if you get same Kim and same areas, 
name is area, you cannot marry that. So that's why actually the first time she come in the United States in 1977, because we cannot get married. But my, my family name is actually was wrong. My father from North Korea in Korean War. And when everybody come down South Korea from North Korea, we have to register against the government. So North Korea, who live in North Korea, didn't register the government, South government. So when my father to register, my father said area named Dungju, not the Gyeongju, Dungju Kim. But South Korean government said, we never heard that Dungju Kim. So he some kind of pushed my father, if you want, why don't you go ahead and kill you, Kim? <laughs> so my father had no choice because he, he, during the war, you know, you have to do something. So he does a kill you, Kim. And now it's the same Kim family. And then my father said, but no, his mother's, my father heard about this and she said, actually, we are wrong. You can change it. So. Uh, when 1980, when she come to Korea again to marry, then I go through, it's a couple of months go through to, you know, legal system and change it to correct it. And then we can, finally we can register the marriage register certificate. Did and you then, marry in the Presbyterian Church? Because we're sitting yeah. in the Presbyterian right. Church yeah, yeah. Sunday school room right now, I believe. Yeah. Right. We married in the church. You married yeah. in the church. He's grew up that church. All his brother were married at mm. church. Yes, Think right. our between he and me, without the God, it's really it's everything connecting. Because before, when I was young, I didn't know that. But when I get older, when I get understanding of read the Bible and the pray. He's just, everything is in his uh, planning. That, that's why sometimes I told him, we were meeting each other, but there was already a plan for he doing. So we had a very difficult time to get married. My parents and uh, was worried because I already come to the United States too far away. We cannot, you know, hardly get married, but I go back and get married even they have the same you know, family name, and almost three months he had to go to hire the lawyer when to I go solve to, the problem. When I go to Korean government, here's I got, have a order from the court to change my finance. He said he been working at that office 20 years. This is the first time he got to see that one. It was that much a difficult one, but we go through it. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this, and then we're gonna get you to the United States, but I'll quickly ask, what was your dating life like? Was it like dating here? Were the, did the two of you go out alone and go to dinner and go to movies, in, in, or was you it- You mean United States? You know, was, Korea. No, Korea. when you were in Korea. Oh, we Korea. I think it's the same normal same people. Thing. Sometimes yeah. fun, sometimes yeah. fighting, you know, and then you know, again, you're pretty we normal. Movie and we go uh -huh. eat. I didn't yeah. know if it was, the, the two of you went out alone together, the two of you, but you, were, you did that. Yeah. You know the culture. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you get married and you decide at a point when your, a company gives you an offer to move to the United States, mm -hmm. and they offered you a position here. One of the company here, right. At this point, how many years has, had it been since you married? I don't remember. How long after? We married 19, 1980. And you were offered the job in Right January, after we married. Right after you were yeah. married. Right. So you moved here. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your life in Jacksonville. Okay. Uh, did you like the United States in Jacksonville immediately, or were there lots of startling changes? Uh, tell me about life here, right initially. It's just a ring in my brain. First three years, I cannot think in any of it because I have to support my family. At okay. uh, that time, I already have one child. He was a, when coming, he's a three months old, but now he's a 37. And then a year later, we got twins. Actually, actually, she was the one girl, so we tried, but two boys come out, so now we're three boys. Three boys. <laughs> and no girls. Uh, no girls. No girls. So first three years, I feel like it. I only 
keep thinking about how I can support my family. Because she got three children, she cannot even work. And I work three jobs, about two years, first three years. And at 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock, 8 to 5, 6 to 12. Even though you were brought here by a company? Huh? A company? No, 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 no. no. Oh, I missed see. Uh, yes, I just okay. like, please. I come here as uh, one trading company in here, and then come over here. And then one month later, I have to break the contract. Somehow, they ask me some unfair things. Something they're asking me some business putting here from my old company. So I said, I cannot do that. So I have to, so we break it. I said, no, I don't want to do it. Then now I got nothing in Jackson. I don't know anybody, my no family, no relationship. And even some of my friends is New York, California, they said, what you doing over the countryside? Come on down, come do. You got job here, everything. It should be job there. But I wish I can go, but I had the money to move in. So I have to sit here. So you, Some, you held lots of jobs at the same time. Tell me about that. That must have been. It is not really professional no, job. It's just working. Uh, for just working whatever I can have a job. Mm -hmm. So in the morning, I work in some printing company. And so about most time, 4 o'clock in the morning to 7. And then I work 8 to 5 is normal company. So there's several companies I have to change. And then 6 to 12 is go to some Italian restaurant or a Chinese restaurant and some cook or some dishwashing like that. I've been two years now. Oh, my word. Uh, so you, you were really working all the time, and you were barely seeing each other. Yeah. Tell me, so you yeah, did that for we have a number a, of years. Uh, you would eventually and, and make, open your own business. How did that come about? So after two years, I think I have one company, the German, which is uh, uh, one of the uh, sub country of uh, Bristol Meyer. They are good company, still in Jacksonville. Then I started working over there. I think I've been about five years over there. And, but I have to work. And I work uh, myself, my own business, which is uh, landscaping maintenance is small, you know, something like, like actually cut the grass. You know. So company finish about four o'clock and summertime sunset is about nine o'clock. So I do it five to nine still working in every day. And then Saturday working, but I never working Sunday because I always spend time Sunday in the church. I never work. And then my is that no, no, cut the grass, landscape, maintenance, getting growing. This money is more than company right now. So about five years later, I have to decide which way I want to go. And that time, I have some uh, big contract coming. In five years, they probably, I didn't have advertising anything. In the bubble, they introduced me. He's good work, and he's going to, and then one of the kinds of uh, apartment, it's a big, um, big job. They asking me to do it. There's one of the, my customer was the owner of that one. So they asking, so now if I go and do that contract, it's much more than my company pay. <laughs> So about five years later, that is a 19, 1987, something like that. So now I quit, I 100% go into the landscaping business. That is, I've been about 20 years. 20 years. And then do, don't you specialize within the landscape business? Uh, do you, do you have another business? Uh, no, that bit? time was only that. Oh, and yes. then I went to FCCJ that time. Now it's a different name. I have to some several calls, not for actually uh, uh, certificate, just, you know, uh, uh, vocational or something yes. like that. I learn still school and many of, you know, seminar I go learn myself. So I've been about 20 years. And then same time I do, you know, I have a Jacksonville sister city been service 20 years. And as a volunteer. As a volunteer, yeah. 
So most time is my volunteer is church and Jackson Bethesda City. But of course, our volunteer work from UNF, but some about seven, eight different volunteer I had the job. Now it's starting to come down. And then 19, uh, 2002, somehow after starting that orchid growers, you know, checks my orchid. I don't know you heard about it. So I'm an orchid grower right now. So you all, you're running, you run a landscape business, and you also run an orchid business, correct? It's first of some year, yes. So 19 orchid, uh, landscaping business, 1986 to, I think, 2005, Six. 2006. Okay. And the orchid business starting 2002. So about four years of two company is too, too much for me. So 19, 2006, I sold out the landscaping business, but the company is still there. They're still running about almost more than 30 years. And then my orchid business is to, starting 2002, so about 16 years right now. And, you're, and you still have an active orchid business, and you sell to people from how far away? These about people? six states in Southeast Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, some Alabama, like that. And most of them is we sell, some of them directed to flower shop, and some of them is a wholesale in that area, Miami area or North Carolina area, directed there. And then also, um, we just have some contract with the Earth Fair, starting in our Fair store. Earth Fair. Grocery store, there's a oh, grocery store. Yeah. Yeah. Earth Fair. Okay. Yeah, we, we just have a three new one, Atlantic Blue Bond. Okay. It's just, a, I think, a new company, yeah. Mandarin. Like a fresh market, they're yes. starting new uh, Earth Market. The they they, Earth they sign, they advertising is live longer. Oh, okay. Is that, they're <laughs> all the product is like, uh, what's the name of that? So you have a contract with, mm, with them as I well. Just started. And your business is actually located out of Green Coast Green Coast Springs. Spring. So you must have to have some acreage there to do uh, that. It's a land is about 10 acres, and then our greenhouse is about three acres. Greenhouse shelf. And then it's about 300,000 orchids there. And you were you actually are living down in Green Cove Springs now, yeah, correct? I, yes, our home is in San Pablo. Oh, San Pablo. And Monday to Friday we live over there. We enjoy the countryside. <laughs> and then Saturday, Sunday we come home. Well, tell me then, what what do you find yourself doing most of the time? Do you work with the business? Are you at home? Did you uh, have have you gotten into the business world here? Well, right now is uh, my life is work harder than ever. <laughs> I think uh, why am I supposed? I almost uh, retire time because uh, what 19 uh, 2000 what are you? Actually, 2003, here? we planning retired somehow, but somehow I have to do this long story, so I have to do that. No, or well, what happened? Fine. He had a heart heart problem. He had a heart oh, attack yeah. one time. 2010. So before I was just yeah. helping behind. Then I was thinking about he's doing too too much for the running business. I used to working the small company about 15, 13 years, but I decided maybe I helping him some this business, the part of it, so he can be more relieved. So I started making you know, order from the, you know, the customer order, everything I was doing. The well, reason is number one, one, is one a, mm, huh? What we need is she didn't work when we three kids. And then when they growing a little bit, uh, she worked in the company we both work. Oh, and that then, time is uh, my uh, parents coming from mm, Korea. When my kids was- uh, From Korea and they take care of our kids. So they so, stay. You're they stay at home. Like, uh -huh. uh, when I had a twin, which is uh, three kids at the same time. Like a trio. Yeah, my my all two older sister, they didn't have a baby. They are like one sister was 12 years old, another sister is 11 years old. When they marry, more than 10 years, but they never had a baby. And here I, I'm the one baby. I just have a baby, too many babies. <laughs> my sister was really. All my family worrying about 
how is she gonna have that three, three sons, right? So my sister decided sending my parents to here to helping to, you know, for my kid. So my parents they came over here. So I got a job. So we get a little, you know, that my parents was helping watching the kids. So I got a job so we can be a little, little better. And did your parents stay here? The rest yeah, of they in my, they're about three years. They all, yeah, but they all passed away. They all passed away. But they went back home after Yeah, my, pa my father went there, yeah. And then uh, when I have a get, so she worked in company, and when I get better economic because of my landscape business good, so she stay home, quit and stay home. But I starting again this uh, orchid business, and then it was so she decided to help me, and also it's too far in and out. So now she works most of her time in her life right now. A lot of work. <laughs> I think that's, uh, well, I know. I think she she may know. enjoy it, but it's, you know. Sometimes I pray to the Lord. Dear Lord, I, I, I want to, because I'm the person, when I work in the company, my boss told me one time, your work colleague. He told me, but I didn't understand what, what that time, because once they give it to me work, I never do any other thing. I keep doing working. So my boss told me, you work early. You don't, when you do something, you just keep doing that. You don't talking to people or you just concentrate working. So he told me something like that, but I didn't understand. Now I realize, baby, I, like uh, even we have employee, right? I doing most of the working than any other people because I guess I, I don't trust people or I, I, I want to do perfect to the reason is I did the packing because we got order from the customer. We have to making the packing for the plan. What I want to do when we starting the business with him, we look at all the store. We went to Walmart, you know, all the store carrying the orchid. How we want? How we gonna do business? And we have to make a direction to how our gonna business doing that. And that time, a lot of big. Uh, like a Walmart or like a, a storage in a Home Depot, like they want to be buying from Laroman. But we decided we're going to supply like uh, directly for the flower shop and we want to make a good quality product. And we want to, you know, our business is a small business, big business, middle business. We want to just flat size. Yeah. We don't want to just one, si one direction. Actually, the, the, the Home Depot and Target, they're too big for us. Because we have the same time. It's Mother's Day, they want tens of thousand plants together. We cannot do that. Yeah. So, well, let, let's talk a little bit about the diff, what you've embraced in this country, and it sounds like a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, what you have, for instance, uh, let's talk about uh, the culture of South Korea that you brought with it with you. Do you eat primarily South Korean food that you prepare or you find otherwise or do you eat everything? What, uh, do you eat more American food? Tell me what that's like in your household. We're eating the everyday Korean food, most of them. My husband is, uh, he like, uh, he don't care what kind of American, Italian, he like everything. I never complain my yeah, whole life what she, huh? what she gave me yeah, okay. food. The breakfast we had like, like American style. Okay. We had like fruit and oatmeal and you know, egg or something. Lunch, I start making, you know, the Korean food, most of the Korean. Sometimes we're going out to steak and sometimes Italian. We, we like everything. <laughs> But most of at the world, now is all the grocery store, especially Korean food, is very good, you know, it's easy to making, for they already, you know, well, when we were come to Jacksonville, it's hard to find a grocery store for Korean food, but now is we have a Korean Everywhere. food. Is, everything's very good, you know, condition. We can just make it right away. So some easy way we can do, and, uh, so we were like uh, eat number one is uh, Korean food, but in we home, like going out to eat. Home. That's the we are like Chinese food, we are like Japanese food, we like everything. So we 
We are enjoying oh. all the food. It's yeah. very lovely. We still, still have three meals per day, like Korean <laughs> culture. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. Yeah. Three meals every day. That's, that's the, pretty much the same here, I right. guess, right. for most people. Um, talk about what you miss the most about South Korea. Uh, what is the most unusual thing? And maybe now that you've lived here so long, nothing's unusual to you about the United mm -hmm. States or Jacksonville, but what's something unusual here and what you like the most about living mm -hmm. here? So all of those aspects of life. Well, actually, is, uh, I'll tell you is a freedom. Even you, it's not, I'm not talking about politics. Is uh, when I live in Korea was still dictatorship, but also some company, some schools. Is when I live in Korea, I didn't notice that one. But after I live in United States, is more freedom. Yeah. In United States, when you work in company, you can. Put it the, the other way, in Korean system is you have to follow the company rule very hard. Sometimes it's not fair, but you still have to do it. But in United States, doesn't do that, you know what I mean, more, more fully. Also, some, in the other way, the Korea is if you lose a job, you have to get another one. I told you, there's lots of competition. But United States, not that much hard to change the job. It's still a little hard, but it's not really that much hard. So uh, in United States, this life is more free. It's more you can talk to people what I want. And if you don't want it, you don't have to do it. You know what I'm talking about. So it's very simple. When I work in company in Korea, I cannot go home. You, we, it, it's our hour is nine to five actually working hour. But after five, I cannot go home because there's a director over there, manager over there, chief over there. I have to wait until they go home first. Yeah, you know, something like that. So I have to sit and wait. More because sometimes working more, something like that. And but in, now is Korea is some change too. Now they don't care that their bosses over there, young people buy and they go home. Now much better than before. But that time is that. But in United States, five o'clock buy and go home. You know when I work in the company, that kind of thing is more uh, better. Uh, life that time, but in Korea right now uh, is almost you know, same as United States. You know, so, so about when I work in Korea is almost twelve hour day working company. But now is they only eight hour, nine hour. There's a difference. You know, so now a lot of your life in Jacksonville is. Uh, Church Center. This we're at the First Presbyterian Church, as I mentioned. And uh, did you help start this this group? Uh, it's it's a group of South. It's a South Korean. Uh, do you mean this church? Yes. yes. Yeah, I'm the one. Uh, I'm the one. Uh, one of the members starting this church. And it's called the Korean Presbyterian. Yeah, the Korean it? First Presbyterian Church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you. Not have helped with this. Yeah, 19 years old, 19 years ago, about four family, including me, we starting this church. Huh. And this has been part of your life, a big right, part. Right. What else uh, socially, culturally, spiritually has been part of your life in Jacksonville? Yeah, so, like, of course, you know, first thing is a family and business. And then I especially many times volunteer for Sister City Association and church. That, and then Korean Association. We have a name is the, the Korean Association of North Florida, which is North area. That five is most of my social. Uh, 
and then some more is like uh, some you no know, I have a few years work for UNF and some charity which is child fund and some some kind of like it I am. So then if you have a few extra hours and you want to do what's really fun for you, <laughs> what would that be here in Jacksonville? What what do you do? I don't know. My my son told me one time, Mom, you going you going to that you going to church is your hobby? Because in my son, <laughs> he have a lot of hobby. He do school diver and he fixing the, his car and he going traveling. But our life is we working, go church. No, you, it's, what you were saying is our life is a uh, church. Church is our number one important to our life. Then family, then, and then my son so us never go, we didn't even go to New York yet, because we don't barely are uh, traveling. So my yeah. son told me, mom, you, you need to make some hobby or something, do some play golf or playing nothing or something, do it so I, I can, you know, help you do that. But I wanna talk about, I'd like you to talk about your children. Tell me about your three sons and uh, where they attended school growing up and what they're all doing now. Uh, we, we are very proud of our three sons. One of them born in Kansas, two of them born in Jacksonville. Nine, one of them 1980, two in 1982. And they went all to Sandalwood High School. Sandalwood High School? Sandalwood okay. High School. And one time I suggest them to, what's the school of a double, no. Stanton? Stanton, whatever, Stanton now prepare to so call. High School is a public school, and then right. you sent them to yeah, they, the they, they sent them letter to my all three son. If you want it, you can whatever come to it, and then all the my college preparatory school right. is competitive. Mm -hmm. to right, yes. but all three son doesn't want to go. So I say it's fine. I understand because I have hard work in my high school. My parents push. I'm a I'm a graduate number one high school in Korea. That means you have to work very, very hard. So, for example, some, it's kind of a Korean SAT. Now, I'm the one of who have a perfect course. Not, not, not even wrong answer one. Perfect. It's not on a couple of people, whole country. He become newspaper because at that time is very mm -hmm. smartest person go to school, and he was perfect mm -hmm. school. But you know, like as his parent and my parent pushing too much when, when I was little, my I have to study until like one o'clock and in the because middle, the is, elementary uh, school. If you're in the best school, you have to work hard because of a lot of competition, you know. You know right? So so they went. Uh, that's why I didn't push him to go stand up. Okay, you're fine. And then they all two of them go University of Florida. One of them go University of Miami. All three go same time go college. But good thing is they all three have a hundred percent scholarship from state of Florida. That's what we can do it. If not, I cannot do it. You know. So they were all bright. Future yeah, scholars. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. All three have. Well, yeah, actually, some... my son, my oldest one, will go to University of Chicago, and he got. You I know. mean, University of Chicago. Yeah, but I told him, he think he get a full scholarship, but when he noticed, it's half of him is... Uh, First time they say yeah, full, so but now they red long there's a 50%. I asked my son, older son, if you go University of Chicago, my twin want to go different, then we could not stop supporting you because it's too, too difficult to... So your brother, you have to think about it. And he, my son decided you, you have to, for he going to you have to. So what sure. are they all doing now, all okay, your sons? First one is in uh, ministry. Uh -huh. <laughs> my phone? I think my week can go back to it. No, I think it's mine, but it's no, not. No, I think no, her. We, we, we can go back to what your son's doing now, perhaps, and we can... You can edit it, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, this is my first son. 
he just ordained uh, last, last month in a uh, uh, new vision Baptist Church in Silicon Valley. Southern Baptist Church. And the Southern Baptist Church, he just, he graduated uh, a golden, co golden, golden Cornell, golden in Cornell minute, uh, uh, Cornell, golden yeah. Cornell that is, I think, established by uh, uh, a doc, uh, pastor, he just passed away. That, Pest Billy Graham. Billy Graham, okay. yeah, yeah, he has a person. In a program that was established. He established that, com that college, I believe. Because your son is actually a Baptist minister, did you no. say? Right now. Right no, now. No, that school was a non uh, nominated. So he can do any church. I see. A so non denomination. Non, -non denomination. So now he works in a Baptist church over there. So he loved it. He, he enjoyed it. So. My oldest one was very smart because when he was um, when we were in the garden in private school Christian private school and one day he come home he was very feel good and then he's he come home and hallelujah he's five years old <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know when he was young he never he, cried even in I whole life the God, I mean, we grow in the church and we marry, but I really uh, didn't meet the God at that time. But my son, he's living little, he's different than the Even, my, even the, he was like five months, six months, one year, two years, you know, he, the young, he lay down the bed. He always smiled, you cannot believe it. He never, he never cried. So what did, what was his uh, degree? in college. What uh, degree? Master degrees. Master degree in? A seminary. Sem okay. Yes. okay so I'm sorry. Now, let's talk about your twins, mm. your twin sons. Yes. Are they identical, fraternal? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're identical. They are born in St. Luke's Hospital in 1982. <laughs> and uh, they were identical. And they were six pound, 10 ounce, one of them six pound, eight ounce. These are big yeah. babies, she, particularly for she almost She almost dead. When she going into the you know, room, and doctor come out, and after five minutes, she said, he cannot guarantee two babies and mother. She, she didn't know even twin doctor. We didn't know who last We didn't last know. Day last day minute, the right people born. Now doctor told me twins. You know, last day we were visiting he, my kid, old one, and with, with all of them, we went to visiting. And I was like, I gained like seven pounds a week. Every week, grow seven pounds. So I could not even, uh, when I go back from, I could not mm -hmm. get out myself. So I have to put in the roll over, dude. The last uh, checkup, I went over there. He said, he check up everything and then tell me to go home. I said, no, I want to go home because of something. I might blow myself up because my, my tummy was like, I was uh, 92 pounds before yeah, I was. She leg is about this big. I was like yeah, 100 She cannot wear the pounds. shoes even, I think. And then they let me go, so I told him, no. I we find that, out later there was a really dangerous situation. We didn't know. And doctor didn't know either. Oh, uh, my youngest one. But now. And that year was 1980? 1982. 1982 when you had the twins. Uh, and then now he, one of them graduated uh, business in University of Florida. Uh, the other one is the uh, University of Miami. I think uh, he studied about some kind uh, marine, 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 marine biology. Yeah, but now they help me in my good orchid business. They're both in your orchid yeah, business. Yeah, they are very. They are good marketing. Oh. <laughs> they are. They've been. <laughs> They are businessmen, businessmen. One now, uh, how old are they? In high school, in a, in Central yeah, High School. You know that peanut butter cookie, small one, Leeds something. I think L E E Z. I never met a peanut butter cookie. I didn't. Okay, know. there is a something here. Yes. One day when you go to school, you bring about this much in the bag. So why you bring their home? Why you bring the school? And he said, I'm gonna make money. So how? They have a vending machine. They put have the 50 cent 
for one cookie. And he's standing in a vending machine, he sells 25%. Everybody buying it because 50% cheaper. And then he buy only 10 cents from Walmart, or whatever. <laughs> so I said, you cannot do it in school. I said, why not? No, school is not for business. He said, I don't care. Then I called the principal, because I want to make sure there's something wrong. I know the principal at that time, because we worked together with Sister City. So I called him, my son, do this, it's okay. And you know what he said? Who cares, let him do it. It's, he learned about business. <laughs> so they, my son, that much have uh, the, the business me. <laughs> and they not been helping me. Now they just starting helping me because one of my, one of us go to Korea is about, about 10 years teaching English. He just come back. And then he started helping me, and then. So you had one son stay in Korea for 10, ten years? years and, uh -huh. Oh, one of the twins stayed there. The one of the ten, yeah, years. that's come back. Was he in Seoul as well? In Seoul, huh? Yeah. He How did, did he like it? Oh, he don't want to come back. He loved it, he don't want to come back. But he did. And he did. <laughs> and uh, the yeah. other one was, uh, his hobby is uh, uh, a sports car. He fix it and you know, make modifying and go to the show like that. But now he's supposed to always help me right now. And it's pretty, the sales amount pretty go up. Yeah. Are any of your sons married? No. Uh, no. That's why you, that's <laughs> my problem right it's now. A that's the only problem I have. Oh. I wish they married soon, you know. We and keep talking to them, but. Well, of course, you've got one in California. Would you like to see your your sons uh, stay here in Jacksonville? Oh, uh, anyway, yeah. Anywhere. I think uh, the twin probably keep living here. Uh, my first son, he's always said, "Whatever God told me, I gotta do it." That's why he always. So he may be not in Jacksonville. He may go around there. Do you have any other family here? Uh, mm -hmm. In addition to, I guess you consider this your church. Family, right, right. But you have no other, f so you have lived here all these years with just yeah. visits from In Jacksonville is no, no family. No family. One of them is my uh, brother in, second oldest brother in California, my sister in New Jersey. So you have some, at least in the United States, yes, that you true. may occasionally see. Right. Um, we, we'll just cover a little bit more. Uh, tell me about Christmas for your family. How do you celebrate that? <laughs> I, I guess you're at church some, but how else would you celebrate Christmas? Oh, well, it was a normal Christmas before. It's a have a Christmas trees and a gift and then, and then I think since about three, four years ago, we're not doing Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> because our All my kids is, is growing. Most of the busiest yeah. time is uh, Christmas. And then my old was old, oldest one, he don't come in because his most busy time this is, is uh, Thanksgiving yeah. to Christmas time. And my twin, they are too old to be one of Also, they more busier than Christmas. They have a friend, whatever, you know what I mean? So... I think we need a new, if we, they are married. Then maybe we do it again because of kids, you know what I mean? Well, is there anything else you'd like to add to this interview? Uh, to, uh, uh, you think <laughs> you'll remain here in Jacksonville uh, forever uh, for your life? Yeah, yeah. Well, we not any plan to move out from Jacksonville because uh, first time I didn't know how good in Jacksonville. I just couldn't move because I don't have money. I told you about after 30 years living here, I don't think we can find a better place than Jacksonville right now. It's like a hometown because it's like we've been here almost 40 years. Because there's no. We, first time we didn't have a choice because in the church a lot of people moving to Atlanta. There's some there. My brother moved to the uh, the. Um, Washington, Atlanta, and they are moving city. everybody. But 
But we really, we have three kids, we didn't have, we have to working, we didn't even have money for the moving. That's why we, we never thinking about moving. But here we are almost like 40 years in Jacksonville. Now we have money for moving, but we don't want to move. <laughs> now we have money for moving, but we do not want moving. <laughs> because of good weather and Jacksonville Peepers is really nice. I think it's a nice place. We just talk about this uh, fellowship time in here. Our pastor is moved from New Jersey. And then we talk about is Jacksonville is really a good place to live with. I think Jacksonville is more like a lot of different country people together. Because when I live in the first time in Kansas, I never seen a black people. Because my sister living in the area is all white people there. So I didn't even know the black people are in there too. But when I come to in Jacksonville, it's all mixture in Asia because my my kid went to high school, Sandalwood, it's all mixture. White, it's like a rainbow, Asian, you know, I'm talking, we talk about melting, so it's very nice to so live. Very people are not, you know, very get used to the, uh, you know, internationally. So they are more openly than any, you know, other place, I think. And I forgot to ask you both something. When did and I, when did you become American citizens? Uh, it was 19, uh, yeah, 1987, I think, because uh, I just find out that one because I I just applied to Medicare. I got 65. Oh, so okay. oh, so they are asking <laughs> certificate of birth certificate or a citizenship that I have to digging up, and I think 87. So same yeah, time. Yeah. Same, same time. Well, a belated 40-year uh, welcome to Jacksonville. Uh -huh. How fortunate our community uh -huh. is to have you as an active part uh -huh. of the Jacksonville community. Uh -huh. You know, we're like a last one. Maybe my husband was been a lot of volunteer working, but maybe rest of uh, our life because oh, yeah. when we Jacksonville here, we really didn't have anything no money, but we had a starting kid in here, and we become wealthier than ever we dreaming. So right now we're still under working on the business, but we are dreaming of a lot of things when we get and becoming or more wealthy, so especially thinking about student exchange program for Masan and uh, America, they keep changing. This mean, mean is more some volunteer work to between Korea and United States. So, so can... you would, as uh, maybe during the rest of your life, you'd like to get involved in some other community volunteer Right, endeavors. right, right, yeah. And also, my son want me to get out the business. He want to do it himself. <laughs> <laughs> so we'd like to have more involved in the community, the volunteer. So what I can do so for what we, need is, well, we got a lot of things from the in United States. And before, when I come to America, I didn't know really history about America, how it become so strong America. But I read a book, a lot of book about how America is uh, so strong is uh, people like us to supporting this country. And anything volunteer working, you know, so what we can do is more looking for neighbor and the people who need the help because a lot of people helping us when we were really difficult time, when we have a three key, a lot of people pray for us. They supporting us for the lot of, you know, food, money and thing. So we got, we own a lot of things from in Jacksonville and America too. So we would like to be something where we got so much. So do we want to share and we want to have more fun to be enjoying our life. It's make us more happy and make other people happy too. So I think I'm a, right now, I'm on the church, you know, whatever, but I got another one is, uh, it wasn't that much activity, but uh, pres uh, I'm a president of a Korean American Cultural Center. So I am, so probably is more focus on me is for uh, Korean American Cultural Center and Jacksonville Sister City Association and church that may be in a life. So the Korean American Cultural Center is for my plan is 
I can introduce Korean culture, which is a good one to introduce in the United States. Also, I can uh, teach the American culture to Korean community. And then whatever we need some between Korea and United States, which is more detailed is Jacksonville and Changwon City, which is our sister city. What I can do about student exchange program and exchange culture or something, I may have a more focus on that because I'm, um, I'm maybe retired after my business, so my son is going to take care of it, and I maybe keep doing it because we don't want to stop. We want to do something on my whole life until we die. <laughs> so it's more is uh, basically between Korea and United States. Or, uh, and then Jacksonville and Changwon City. I want to keep doing some volunteer work for that. Sean Kwon Kim and Min Kim, thank you so much for a very insightful interview and sharing your life with us. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay.